Welcome to Relu Fair Conversation Podcast. I am your host, Prince Ayua Kinsonya. On this podcast, we'll be documenting, talking to different people from all walks of life, having random conversations and everything in between. Sit back, enjoy, and thank you for listening. Welcome back to Relu Fair Conversation Podcast. I'm your host, Prince Ayo Akinsan. On today's episode, we are going to be discussing Nigerian theater. And with me on the episode today, I have the king of theater himself. I will let my guest introduce himself. Good evening, everyone. My name is Joshua Alabi. I'm the CEO and creative director of Kenyansa Concerts, Lagos. And Kinigo Concept is Kinin a Kenyan song concept. Could, first of all, what does that mean? How does the name came about? Kenyan song basically is um, is a Yoruba word that is what is he saying? Kenyan song. What are you saying? Okay. Yeah, Kenyan song. So um, for me, it was then about. I mean, still about. What do I want to say as a young person who's from a country that's got all the natural resources, material resources, vibrant young people, creative people. Um, so what do I want to say that is different from what the world is saying about us? Not only cybercrime, not drugs. So what else do I want to say? So I want to talk, tell stories. I want to talk about arts. I want to talk about people and relationships. And that's how we came about Kenyan Song. And you chose theater to do so. What informed that decision? Well, two things informed the decision. Um, firstly, while I was at the University of Lagos studying theatre, I had been practising for many years before then, professionally. And in Unilag, I, we were about 150 in my class. So I realised that out of 150 people who had come to Unilag in my set to study theatre, I was the only person, I mean, well, studying theatre in my class, I was the only person who had filled theatre arts in JAMP. Wow. Every other person wanted to study law, philosophy, mass comm mm-hmm. or something. They didn't meet the cut of Then back. Nigeria happened And to then they <laughs> dumped them in, okay. in creative arts. And so while we're there in school, a lot of, many of them were dreaming and talking about, okay, after graduation, they would go back to study law, to study this, to study that. And then for me, because I'd been practicing and while in school, I was even living and making money through theater. So for me, it became an issue of, so if 149 people graduate, that's minus 149 people from this industry who should make the industry better. So there I thought about creating an organization, creating an industry where there is none, an organization where theater people could be employed, um, tell stories, go abroad, do every other thing that our mates in the other sector can do. Yeah, yeah. And the other parts being living in Bariga then. Bariga was one of, you know, one of the hot places mm-hmm. in, in Lagos. Then it was about the downtown boys fighting the police, machetes mm-hmm. and guns mm-hmm. and so on. And I was there and art was the only thing that thrived. So we artists were the only people who were able to face the street touts, the loud yes. and perform on the street and while they were recruiting young boys we also had to recruit young boys okay. so we were the only people who could challenge them and then for me um it was successful because we tr- we ended up turning many of them into artists who now speak who are t- touring around the world and doing social political works and um yeah so these two things give life to kenin so walk me back where did I know you know on your entrance form you filled theater art, but how did you develop passion for theater? It has to be way before. How? Yeah, it was way before. I grew up in the barrack with my parents and my mom, a devout Christian, but who was really in touch with her culture and heritage. She was so very close with her father. Her father then used to be like the Olode in the whole of Oshun State. Okay. And he was a worshipper of Shongo. So then my mom would take me to the village, to the Shongo festival. Yes, yeah. And then this was just, just about when Modaki Kiani Fair had yeah, ended, you know, their war the among war. each yeah. other. So there was the, um, the, the interest in 
the communality. Let's begin to run these festivals together. So my mom would take me there. I would see magic. I would see masquerade parade. They would turn water into um, into 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 tea, and they would flip and do quite a lot mm -hmm. of things. The masquerade and costume parade. So from there, the storytelling, the folklore, the songs. I just fell in love with it. And because I was also very close with my mom, I was made to do almost everything she did. She was a tailor, so I was I learned to sew. She was the choir mistress in church. I learned to play music instruments. I learned to play the harmonica. I learned to sing, join the choir, did drama, did quite a lot of things. So it was a childhood of activities. And that's how my love for theater started. Started. Hmm. And you were able to nurture it and to the point that professionally, even getting paid. So what would you then say theater versus what the cinema in Nigeria how has the re what's the reception like for you because you are young and to be championing this course how is how is Nigeria accepted it versus the traditional going to the movies or you know cinema kind of role versus uh, theater I'll be very honest, theatre still has a long way to go in Nigeria uh, because the consciousness died. So now it's been... It's been... Slowly coming back. It's yes. slowly coming yeah. back, but really it has a long way to go. And why is it even harder? Why will it even take more years? Because the more technology is advancing the film space and the more filmmakers are getting it right, I mean, not that theater and film cannot go side by side, but the more they're getting it right, tight, um, theater would continue to suffer, that um, will continue to face its setback and its reception. Because in a way, it's live theater, it's a live art. Life art. So yeah. it has more power when it's face me, I face you. When I can give it to you immediately and you can, you know, I can get the response immediately. Um, over time, there's been that argument, which is more intense is it theater is yeah, it film is higher, yeah. i mean they are both intense but the reception um unlike film film has gotten to a point where whether you like it or not it has become it's becoming food mm -hmm. it's becoming water that we consume every yeah, day yeah. so as long as you have your amazon you have your netflix i hope i can mention names on this yeah, yeah absolutely so as long as you have amazon you have um um, um amazon prime netflix mm -hmm. you have all the SVD even, and VOD even, platforms, even you have YouTube, Africa Magic and yeah, YouTube and so yeah. on, on your phone, um, you have no choice. You would continue to consume them mm -hmm. willingly or unwillingly. But for theater, it's about the will. It's about the zeal. It's about the availability of money in my pocket. It's, a, it's about, okay, uh, mind share also. It's about quite a lot of things. It's also about what story is this theater play telling? Am I interested? Um, is it telling a story that I would love to hear? So, also it's about quite a lot of things, even, even, even getting to take yourself out of your home on a weekend to drive to the to theater, drive, yeah. to buy the ticket. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot that's still um, um, in the way of theater becoming totally receptive in Nigeria. And um, the lack of availability of space as well is also a thing. So, but I would say over time, based on from one producer to another mm -hmm. based on production companies um theater is thriving it's getting there with more publicity with more corporate and government funding mm -hmm. um i think it will do better in the next 10 years that was going to be my question the role of funding is it readily well let me preface nothing is really readily available but how open are organizations, companies willing to fund a project? Zero. Hmm. Yeah, it is difficult. And <laughs> I, I watched the episode before now, um, the hair maker, hair seller, when she was saying, I wouldn't advise anyone to go into hair business. I may not categorically say I wouldn't advise anyone to go into theater, uh, but I would have to think about it. Yes, because many times at our organization, we have interns from universities, volunteers. We have people who come from different institutions mm -hmm. to intern or to work with us. And we also work with universities. And 
many times some of them even reach out via social media platform to say oh we want to do this want to do theater acting want to direct for theater and so on and firstly my advice is um if there is something else that you can do that will put money in your pocket <laughs> on a steady do it first, do it first. i mm -hmm. met with a guy in a good yesterday who works in a bank now he tried to work with us and this is because really the industry is has no money has no um um complete structure hmm. in terms of structure that every organization that wants to give you money they they, they, they want to believe that there's a structure mm -hmm. it's actually an industry um and there, there is a structure and what's the value i'm getting in return um that's the business world that's the corporate world mm -hmm. that's what that's how the economy is yeah, yeah. Um, except, except for a few times maybe when you appease um, or you lean on their CSR um, opportunities to be able to get money and work with them. But really, most corporate organizations are not interested in what theatre can offer. If you have seen the light, if you have, if you have are coming out to say, yeah, let's do this, um, even if not for anything, for the preservation of culture mm -hmm. or for, you know, for some of these little things or for societal re-engineering, let's invest in theatre. But aside that, it's been a pretty difficult space for now just picking back on what you said what then has kept you going if support hasn't been there the way you would have liked so what what keeps you going apart well, from passion of course this is <laughs> this is also inbuilt because it, it has to be inbuilt for you to to have survived this now if not you two would have back up shop so what has kept you going um thanks for mentioning passion because that's the major thing and the other thing the other things would be maybe my stubbornness hmm. my stubbornness to i mean i've passed the stage where i wanted to show my father that i can I get something <laughs> from theater because we had that fight it was a big one oh, wow. many years ago until he accepted and he saw the light too and realized that okay you can actually do something great with theater um so my stubbornness to want to make something out of nothing and um i'm happy i'm excited to say i've done nothing else i mean yeah i've done quite a few other things mm -hmm. but every other thing i've achieved in my life every other thing i've been able to do it's been through theater and that's what i told myself even while i was in school um i was in unilag as a performer even when i be, even before becoming a student and then I would see people who had graduated, who were in the industry proper, practice theatre a few for a few years, and then going to filmmaking or mm -hmm, going to banking mm -hmm. or going to mass communication and things like that. So then I remember I used to tell myself that no, this is never going to happen to me. I will do this theatre and I will make money and I will I will <laughs> I will do everything I want to do. I mean I don't have. I'm not where I want to be, but I think that stubbornness or faith or if faith mm -hmm. is then the word. Um, I think it has, that's what has kept me and the organization that I run and the people that um, I work with. Now, on the reception part, reception of theater versus cinema, do you think it's possible to, I don't want to say package, do you think we can, theater can be packaged, can be sold? How possible is it to sell? I guess my question, how possible is it to sell it the same way we sell cinema or we sell series, you know, to these platforms? Do you think there is a market? I mean, there is market for everything. You just have to figure it Brilliant. out. Do you think it's feasible? Yes, it is. And how would um, that work? even though it's a bit difficult mm -hmm. um, and really one must strategize, you must, you must, think and think hard i would probably use our own template okay. how we've been selling theater mm -hmm. and how we've been able to survive mm -hmm. in a little way mm -hmm. some of the crew here or one of them worked with us on a recent project we had so while theater of course is a live art and you have mm -hmm. to be there to enjoy mm -hmm. it the first thing we make sure we do is we roll out quality content we roll out quality Stories. and when i mean quality quality stories mm -hmm. well researched um stories content that will give you everything in the first place it will give you 
everything you want to go to the cinema or you want to see a film on your, on your phone, mm -hmm. everything you will get there and probably even more, you will get it from the plays and the productions that we do. So that's the first thing we focus on. And then number two, um, we try to put theater on digital platform, even though that hasn't worked out successfully. Mm. And we even did a bit more during the lockdown, but um, it's becoming, it's becoming something where we package theater works on digital formats. Mm -hmm. Now, not for the general public, but for certain organizations mm -hmm. to help them tell some of the stories they want to tell. Want to tell. Okay. So okay. Um, another way we've been able to sell theater, um, instead of having to, I mean, just like every other market, you want to provide solution, mm -hmm. just like every other organization. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you don't go into that project. I, maybe that's, what, I mean, over time, we think that's one of the things that have affected theater people. Oftentimes, we, theater people always want to tell what is appealing to them what you think is beautiful. Hmm. Um, your consumer must come first. Your customer must come first. What are they interested in? Don't give them a looter performance when they want to laugh. Don't make them sad when they want to laugh. Don't make them laugh when they want to be think and be provoked into taking action or something. Hmm. So we looked at all of these things and we have a database of corporate organizations and international organizations and NGOs and even government bodies around Africa, in Nigeria, and other parts of the world, and take our time to say, these people, for the next five, two years, what are they interested in? So we know that a Guinness is interested in this. Okay. Um, the government of Berlin in Germany, or the city of, of Berlin in Germany, mm -hmm. these are the things they are looking to achieve in the next two years, and this organization. So we look at all of those, and we, be, we begin to strategize and create pitch deck for all of these people, create stories around it, um, show them the value, just like you are anything pitching for a else, job. Anything anything. Yeah. And we sell the story to them. And oftentimes, so far, it has worked. Hmm. So we produce theatre here and there, here and there. Sometimes for the public, general public, sometimes for specific organizations. organizations. So now, that brings me to this question. And I, I'm afraid, I think I know the answer already. What, in your journey so far, where has the support, who has given you more support? Home or abroad? Because abroad. <laughs> abroad. <laughs> Damn. That's why I said, I think I know the answer. Yeah. So what's the situation like here? Why is nobody? Because your stories, every story is you. T First of all, you are Nigerian. Yeah. So automatically, you are inclined to serve stories that's a prevalent in your environment. So what's the situation like here? How come there is no support versus you are getting more support outside? Um, firstly, what are the challenges here that made it so? I mean, the challenges are there. They are the regular, um, aside, the major th challenges with theater mm -hmm. will be lack of theaters. Because really, if you want to produce theater or you want people to watch theater, mm -hmm. make there theaters, be build theaters. You know, you want people to go to church. They can find a church everywhere yeah. and walk into it. You want people to do banking mm. services. You find banks, banks everywhere. everywhere. You want, you know, you have these things, but you want people to watch theater and you don't have a theater. So that's the number one failure, either from those who practice or mm -hmm. the government. Mm -hmm. But of course, that's why the government has the PPP program, mm -hmm. private partnership Fair, and things yeah, like that. Yeah. So, I mean, so lack of theaters, lack of um, um, capacity, and structure to, I mean, mm -hmm. appropriate structure mm -hmm. within that sector. And also, so then you begin to find, aside those ma two major things, um, you begin to find every other typical Nigerian problem mm -hmm. coming into the, mm -hmm. into the space. I mean, it's not like we're only saying that government, Nigerian governments, they are not interested in theater. They are really not interested in education mm -hmm. as well. <laughs> you know, if they're interested true, in education, true, students true. shouldn't be at home. Shouldn't be, yeah. They are not interested in- Fair enough. You know, Fair so enough, fair. They are not interested in many things. Mm -hmm. So I wouldn't only say it's affecting theater, like the government's nonchalance is only affecting theater. Um, abroad, they have theaters. There are city theaters, yeah, state theaters, yeah, federal yeah, theaters. Yeah, yeah. And, but we have the national theater here. Only churches use it because they are the ones who can pay. You know, so we are left at the mercy of I either the theater culture. That, is, that everybody has open shop in between and deciding stuff. Yeah. yeah. So we are either um, left to 
appeasing to our culture, mm. um, freedom parks sometimes, um, and that can only take a certain kind of theatre show or the Muson Center, which is actually not a theater, mm -hmm. um, or you just find the space. But you can only find the space when you know that you know your audience, you, you know your market, target audience, yeah. and then, yeah. okay, I'm doing this play for these 1,000 people, 500 people, people, and yeah. then they are coming. So Nigeria is happening to theater. So now, personally, I don't believe in just talking about problems. Let's discuss solutions. What are some things? How can we put structures together? The way we can put structures together, I would um, permit me, I would use Kinesso as my template because, mm -hmm. I mean, we are thinking every day, every mm -hmm. night, not sleeping and seeing what can happen. I mean, that's what you do. As, yeah. yeah. Um, we, we used to function only as a troop, as a troop that would go from place to place to place to place. Kinesis started while I was at the University of Lagos. I was working with another organization, recruited some of my mates from my class and other, cl um, other sets. And we began to do productions. And then I began to, just like any other leader, tell them that this will work. And this can do this. And this can do this. So a few believed. And we kept on working. But the future was, um, I mean, the future is to have that big repertory, that mm -hmm. big organization mm -hmm. that we tell stories all around. And interestingly, Kinesson now, we are not only focused on theater. So we're making films, documentaries, we're making adverts and um, quite a number of okay. projects. Okay. But all around storytelling, because the storytelling arc is quite big. And we don't want to go hungry when a GT bank is not interested in theater today, mm -hmm. but they want a short film tomorrow. Yeah, we, we will we do that. that. Okay. Um, we've also grown to become um, a training organization okay. where we don't only offer capacity building within the art space, but over the years, people who work with us, we, we work with about 90% people, 90% um, theater graduates okay. who have gone ahead to study accounting, who have gone ahead to study, um, maybe have their master's degree in law, or do other courses in advertising, in brand management, in um, strategy, and things like that. So we have a bunch of people who study theater, who have that storytelling background, mm -hmm. then who have gone into oh, pockets yeah, and, yeah. and then come together to strategize what's the mind of these organizations. So we've created that structure. Um, like any other corporate organization will have that structure because really to get money from them, we have to think like them. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's, I, that's, for me, I think will be the first solution, creating proper structures. And then, aside for creating proper structures, another solution would be um, capacity building in any area, in any way, which um, we've been doing. And that's why we, if we need 200 people tomorrow morning for a project, we don't have to go too far. You can, you can. Just by making a call now yeah. and going to the office. In fact, from our phones, we don't, we don't call for auditions. Because we have a strong have database, database, database of, we have quite a lot. So um, solution would also be consistent, persistent appeal to corporates and creating value for them to make them and giving them that value in return, letting them know that um, even though you're a bank or even though you're an insurance company, this is how we can tie ourselves to you. And this is what you can use us to achieve to your customers. So over the years, we've worked with medical companies, insurance companies, banks, government um, bodies, and state, federal, and so on. Yeah. So what would you say, because at the end of the day, the general, pub, pub, uh, uh, the general public are the practitioner or the bigger mar biggest market. How, what would you say what can be done to engage the public to have their interest? I feel like with public, with the general public still being interested in theater, then we, we might be able to sell more to them. But because we're in the you know, 21st century, everybody is comfortable mm -hmm. on their phones. Some people haven't even been to theater. I, mm -hmm. I, personally, I don't know the last time I stepped into it. A cinema so how can we engage the public how can we get the public back on the theater side is, is that feasible at all i think it is visible feasible um in quite a number of people have been doing it um, um it also depends on your target audience anyway 
but a few people, a few projects have been able to do that. But of course, they've been able to do that because they have the institutional support and massive funding to be able to create, to be able to storm the city with good campaign on digital platforms, flyering. Um, so I think basically, if we market it well, um, the way, if we market well, people will come to watch theater. And the, the, the magic of theater is, watch me once, you will come again. You will come again. Because so, it's, it's a yeah, beautiful experience. Yeah, if we market well, um, people will come to the theater. Or if you take theater to the people to have a taste, mm -hmm. then they will come find you. That's also another strategy we employ. So we take our performances to the streets, to bus stop, under the bridge, and um, yeah, and we perform there. We have large crowd. But what we do is we get someone or an organization mm, to, to fund to that fund free that. viewing. Yeah. So when we do the free viewing for people and we have another maybe at a certain place, with the free viewing, we've gotten their database, mm -hmm. phone number of people who watched mm -hmm. it for free, email of okay. people who watched it for free. Okay. Um, so when we have something within a space, mm -hmm. we still reach out to them and call them. And because they've seen one for free at a public space, they want to come want into to that come. space to pay for it. How profitable can it be? What's the average ticket price? Depends. Average ticket price depends on Your production. who's producing it and where. Um, on, for mainstream theater, the average ticket price is 5K. Sometimes three, five early bed tickets. But What's the profit margin on that? Ah, uh, well, the profit margin. Do you make any of? Do you make your money back? Is it even possible? It presently impossible to make your money back from ticket sales only. Hmm. Um, and actually, all that's a thing all around the world. Yeah. The only way to make profit from theater is when you have multiple runs. That's why you find maybe shows on Broadway or West End in the UK. Mm -hmm. They run for like the whole month, mm -hmm. every day. So sometimes it's all sold out, sometimes it's not all, mm -hmm. all sold out. But when they run multiple shows, multiple they get their money back. And I think so far from what I've seen, um, I think the longest perhaps we've done here in Terra Culture is probably what, three days back to back? Um, well, Has there been a multiple? Like, yeah, a there's been long? five. There's actually been, I think, seven days. Oh, seven days. There was also a 30 days run of Heartbeat the Musical by Joker Silva and Ole Jacobs oh. in 2018. Okay. A 30 days run. Have you done have you have you done a big production such as that for Kinesa on such platforms? Yeah, we did well, Queen Morumbi the musical at Intercontinental Hotel. Oh. Did you? I, no, no, no. I think the one I saw was at Terra. Terra. Okay. Oh, so okay. we reproduced um in 2019 into 2020 at Intercontinental oh, okay. Hotel. Okay. And how was that? Massive. As the passionate leader of Kenin Saw, um, what's your creative process? A creative process and is... Because I want to assume you, you write some of, the, some of your projects, some mm -hmm. of your story. What's your creative process? Um, the creative process usually is um, we workshop a lot. We work with a lot of young people and just as you asked just now, the I mean, what's the creative process? So we try to think of ourselves as a knowledge sharing and process sharing organization. So we want to know what's, how do we arrive at this? Most of the time, we, we create our works through workshops. We do a lot of research. I mean, sometimes it could be someone coming into the office one day and be like, okay, um, I was thinking about this, or I saw something in the newspaper, or my neighbor, they were talking, and then I heard this thing. Or things like that, it pops okay, up. Or okay. sometimes you dream, sometimes you, you're just somewhere. Mm -hmm. There's something to spark inspire. your mind, something to inspire you. And then it could be anybody, it could be me, come to the office and be like, or oh, we see something on Instagram or anywhere. Mm -hmm. And then we begin to talk about it. And right from talking about it, we start to know, is it something that could become something yeah. and then something and... I mean, that's how we created something where a piece we're still working on, which has been broken down into different spaces, um, which is on identity, bleaching, toning, and colorism. So um, so when we d have such mm -hmm. conversations, we dig deep, a lot of people will begin to look at what's what's been said about mm -hmm. it, you know, the usual mm -hmm. research, mm -hmm. and then we get into our work creative mood, 
bring uh, other artists and other researchers mm -hmm. and strategists and directors and writers, we bring them into the space. It, sometimes it's just singing. Let's just sing. Mm -hmm. You know, we begin to sing mm -hmm. and play. Sometimes it could be another, it could be, guys, let's cook. Our office, we have a kitchen and it's okay. like a sacred place. So let's cook or let's eat or let's go to a beer parlor. Let's okay. just go eat and drink. Yeah. And from there, everything begins Idea to comes yeah, together. come together. We come back to the space. We still begin to work with the body, with the mind, look at books and look at thought processes mm -hmm. and things like that. So um, at the end of the day, we, we have a board as well. And we have a classroom, so we just bring out our board, we begin to write all ideas, the usual brainstorming way, and gradually like that, that's our process. We, I mean, so we call it the workshop up until we have either a story world mm -hmm. or we, well, a story arc, or we have um, yeah, a story world, or we have um, a proper research done, or we end up coming up with something. And that's the final material to use to either go write the full script or to create the work Around and it. device. Yeah. I keep hearing we, 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 we. How big is your team? Currently, um, those who work from the office, four of us. Okay. But um, the, the entire whole, kid is so about 29. 29, yeah. wow. Good. And of course, everybody is not being paid until pro it's project based. I mean, yeah, for the yeah, others, for, but for those house, who work yeah. from the office, they're on. Good. Um, again, I've heard a lot of good things about you. I was specifically told this chairman is the king of theater, so watch out for him. Um, and where can people find you? For people we, that want to learn more, see your work, where are you? We, we are the Kinnisa Hub in Ikeja, um, Oregon, of 19 Sonyolu Street, off Kudrat Abiola Way, Oregon. That's where we are. And on Google, you can find us, just Google Kinnis of Concept, Kinnis of Creative, Kinnis of Foundation, Kinnis of Theatre, Google anything, you'll find a lot of reviews and videos and tours and, and a lot you, about Could us. you spell the Kinnis of Kinniso is K-I-N-I-N-S-O and Concept with a K, K-O-N-C-E-P-T-S. And where can people reach you directly, yourself? Directly email Kinningsaw Concepts together at gmail.com. All right. And on Instagram at Joshua Labi or at Kinningsaw Concepts on Twitter, on LinkedIn. All right. Thank you so much, Chairman. Thank you. I wish you nothing but the best. Thank you so much. Um, I pray your passion pays off. It will pay off. I Amen. know that. I mean, it started paying off. Uh, luckily, you've been getting some work. You get to travel with your team. I pray nothing more, but uh, more success this year. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 2022. More success. And thank you so much thank for you. coming. To our esteemed listener and viewers, thank you so much for listening once again. I'm your host, Prince Ayo Akisonya. And wherever you are listening to us from, please kindly subscribe, follow. Uh, on, on YouTube, we are Relu Fair TV. Kindly subscribe and sh uh, share with your friends and family. Thank you so much. Again, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good night.